Hi everyone and welcome along. Today we're looking at the Doric Cinema that once stood in the centre of the horse racing town of Newmarket, Suffolk in the UK. Located at 142 in the High Street, diagonally opposite the Kingsway Cinema and we'll return to the Kingsway just for a little while at the end. Now to build the Doric, a garage called Kelty's, which used to stand on the site, was demolished. The Doric was built for and operated by local independent company Doric Cinema Newmarket Limited and was designed by Edgar Simmons. The cinema had a 35 feet wide proscenium, a stage 35 feet deep and six dressing rooms. There was a cafe on the first floor. It was fully equipped for stage shows including the latest lighting and visual effects for which the screen could be raised. The projection equipment was the latest available and here are the only surviving images of the projection room that I could find. The projectors were K. Lee, but what model? Comments below please. The cinema was also equipped with a ring main system for the hard of hearing and a car park for 150 cars. The cinema had 1,200 seats across stalls and balcony. It reputedly had the largest balcony of any cinema in the eastern counties. The opening prices were sixpence, ninepence, a shilling or one and threepence in the stalls and one and six and two shillings in the balcony. The Doric opened on the 1st of March 1937 with Will Hay in Good Morning Boys, brand new and still running at the Tivoli in London. The support film was The Gay Adventure in colour, plus a Mickey Mouse cartoon and Gaumont British News. The cinema advertising proclaimed that the Doric was Newmarket's largest, most luxurious and up-to-date cinema and it was very grand. The doors were opened at 7pm by Albert Flack, the commissionaire, in a smart long green coat with buff facings, cap and white gloves, and he was flanked by two page boys. The audience of invited guests first enjoyed a champagne reception in the first floor restaurant and were welcomed by the manager Ralph Woolsey. Now he had been released from the RAF in 1919 with the Mons Medal and a large gratuity. Following the war, he had gained experience in the entertainment field and had personally invested a large sum of money into the Doric. Later, a Mr Cousins became manager. The cinema was officially opened by Major D. Grafton Pryor, chairman of Newmarket Urban District Council. Staff were uniformed in Vaux rows to match the screen curtains. The chief operator on the opening night was Charles Bigley. Victor Nightingale was third operator, but was soon promoted to second. The Doric soon became an immensely popular venue, and during World War II even more so, with the wealth of air bases scattered across the landscape. Sunday concerts soon became a regular feature, with artists such as Jack Hilton and his band, Anona Wynn, Jack Warner and the very young Huey Green. In 1955 it was equipped with Cinemascope and the first film shown in that process was MGM's Knights of the Round Table starring Robert Taylor on the 19th of January and this was followed by Richard Burton in The Robe. The Cinemascope screen was 30 feet wide. Later came television and the decline started. In the last few years of its life audiences became just a few and the Doric was deteriorating. On the 27th of July 1964, it came to no surprise to the locals that the Doric finally closed its doors. The final films were Bette Davis in Dead Ringers and Robert Hutton in The Secret Door. Now in 1966, the cinema was offered to the then Newmarket Urban District Council, but they didn't think there was a need for it. The building then stood empty and unused for 15 years, until it was renovated and reopened in around 1979 as a cabaret and variety club known as the Cabaret Club. Now in 1987 a special evening was held in the club to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the building's opening. When a pathy newsreel film of the original opening was shown 
together with a film starring Will Hay. Many old patrons and members of staff from the early days of the Doric were in attendance. Some old projectionists from the Kingsway and the Doric attended the event, including Doug Anscombe, Eric Humphreys, Ron Fordham, Peter Brown and Michael Fields. Michael started as a rewind boy in 1939 and one day during the war he was the projectionist on a Tuesday matinee when the Luftwaffe decided to drop a string of bombs along the Newmarket High Street. One bomb fell just outside the Doric. There was lots of rumbling and shaking. There was a whole heap of rubble on the flat roof and dust everywhere but the film carried on and nobody got up and left the cinema. One day in the last few years of the Doric there was a fire inspection due. Attempting to check the balcony fire hose reel, Michael realised that it was stuck and no water would come out. So he loosened a few nuts and then water did come out. It suddenly gushed out in terrific force. The water cascaded down the balcony and he says we didn't know where to turn it off, there being several stopcocks in the building. We called the fire brigade and by the time they arrived, the water was cascading off the balcony and pouring through the stalls. This was lunchtime, and when the usherettes came in, they spent the afternoon in bare feet mopping up. The Doric, though, reopened the next day, and he says, we got our licence OK. The film was Cary Grant and Irene Dunn in My Favourite Wife. And in 1947, Michael was promoted to Chief Projectionist, a post he held until the Doric closed in 1964. Usherettes included Gladys Knight, no not that one, Mona Pullin, Esther Doyle, Joan Freeman and Rose Thomas. Gladys said later that she was one of six usherettes and stayed there for ten years. During the short interview for the job, all the girls were asked to show us your legs. You wouldn't get away with that today. Usherettes got paid £1.05 shillings a week, plus a hair grooming once a week in Bumby's hairdressers in the town. Another name mentioned by Gladys Knight was Buddy Rogers, who also worked there in the early days. What a great night at the Cabaret Club to remember the cinema like that. Now the Cabaret Club continued into around 2000, and since then the building has been converted into a pub. It then became a nightclub named Aura, but this closed in 2015, and sadly the building was later demolished. Grosvenor Apartments now stand on the site and as far as I can see it's another bland building with little or no style. Let's have a quick look at other cinemas that were in Newmarket because there were a few. First of all the aforementioned Kingsway was at 109 in the High Street. Now the Kingsway Cinema was opened on the 31st of December 1926 with Madame St Jean. It was a conversion of a mansion known as Stamford House which had been home to the Earls of Stamford and Warrington. The auditorium was built at the rear of the premises and was designed by architect S.C. Addison of Eastbourne. Now here's a rare image of a staff outing in approximately 1929. It has been unfortunately hand-coloured. Now the laughing lady in the hat was the pianist for the silent films. And how many of those do we get to remember? in these videos. A sound on disc system was installed on the 14th of July 1930 when Elstree Calling became the first talkie screened in the cinema. In 1931 a BTP British Talking Pictures sound system was installed. Cinemascope was installed in January 1955 with a screening of Lucky Me starring Doris Day. The scope image was 30 feet wide. Now the Kingsway Cinema was closed on the 28th of May 1977. It was converted into the Coronet Social Club and then the Grand Ole Opry with live country and western music. It later became a nightclub and is now the Ark Entertainment venue. So it carries on in another guise. Next up is the Cozy Cinema in Grafton Street which is now called Black Bear Lane. Located next door to Newmarket Laundry, the Bioscope Picture Hall was opened around 1908. In January 1911 it was renamed Picture Palace and was running Cine Variety. By 1913 it had been renamed Cozy Kinema, 
Palace of Varieties and was still a Cine Variety house. By 1917 it was the Cosy Kinema and it was closed in early 1927 due to the opening of the Kingsway in December 1926. Next up it's the Victoria which stood at 82 in the High Street. Now the Greyhound Hotel was opened in the 1860s and was renamed the Victoria Hotel in 1897. It was renamed again the Carlton Hotel after World War II. Now the Cinematograph Hall was located in the Hotel Ballroom and was opened by 1912 with 350 seats. It was soon renamed the Victoria Hall. In January 1918 it was renamed again the Victoria Cinema Deluxe. It was in use as a ballroom in 1924 when no other than Fred Astaire appeared there. In 1929 it was enlarged to hold 550 seats and reopened as the Victoria Cinema. In January 1930 it was equipped with an imperial sound system. The Victoria Cinema played pictures and occasionally variety shows on its 15 feet deep stage. There were only two dressing rooms. The Victoria Cinema was closed in 1946. Now the entire building was demolished in May 1977 and a branch of Boots the Chemist was built on part of the site. Well, that's about it for this one. I hope you enjoyed looking at all those cinemas in Newmarket. Next up is our tribute to the ABC in Wakefield, so sadly, so recently demolished. Until then, take care of yourselves, look after each other, be kind, and I'll see you soon. Ta-da now.